Hello guys, Rob about one here, and today I'm here with my friend Catherine. Hello. And today we are doing her Aromage deck profile because, well, I asked her to do one, and she said I also do one last week, well, a few weeks ago, and she said she couldn't because her, she needs to update her build. So I waited for her to update her build, and now she's finally finished it. So today we're going to see what Cat has made of Aromage, and she, what reason she has for some of the cards she runs. So Cat, let's get started. Okay, we'll start with the main deck. Move this to the side. Thank you. Okay, I play three Jasmine, obviously, because this is the main draw power of the deck. Whenever you gain life points, you draw one card. And then I play three Rosemary. Fantastic card. Personally, I think it's one of the better ones in the deck because okay. of its um, Armadie's effect what, when you have higher life points than your opponent. Okay. So it basically means that they can't activate anything until the end of uh, the damage step, which really, really helps because the deck's quite slow being a control deck. Okay. Um, I play two Aromage Kalanga. The reason why I play two is because I found with um, a lot of the decks that at the moment, although um, bounce, uh, bouncing spells and traps does help. I feel that the effects of the other two are, are m way better and I don't feel that you probably would need that at three at the moment. Um, that may change with the meta change <laughs> so <laughs> Oh god, the badness. Uh, and then, surprise surprise, I actually play one Aroma Jar. Um, okay, you need to explain this, Kat. You need to. Well, um, I, I tried it out and I actually found that it wasn't that bad because sometimes... When you have an op opponent who blind MSTs the card that you need to gain life points, you still need every turn some way to gain life points to gain advantage through either being able to draw bounce cards back or changing battle phase. And, and Ar Aroma Jar actually uh, does this really well. Um, you gain 500 life points during each end phase, so you've got the effect, the adding life points effect during your turn and your opponent's turn. So you've got more chances for your effects to go off, more chances for uh, your traps to go off as well. And it really help, helps you gain advantage in the field. Um, to aid all these fantastic plants and um, get out the ones that you need, I play three Lone Fire Blossom. That's kind of obvious. That's kind of obvious, yeah. And um, to finish the monster lineup, I've decided to play two Cactus Bouncer. Um, the reason why I play two rather than three is that I did find that um, it can cl clog a bit at, at three. And um, I feel that, you know, two was actually enough to get off the effect and gain a pretty good advantage on the field for that one. Um, moving on to spells. Yep. So we're on to the amazing spell line up. <laughs> well, the first one is obviously the field spell. Free Aroma Garden. This the deck would be nothing without this, to be honest with you. Um it's five hundred attack and defence for every monster on your on your side of the field is a, a completely brilliant um effect because you can just add that to your cactus bouncer or whatever you have on the field. Um and also, you even gain knife points if um, if um, you lose a monster as well. So it's pretty awesome. Um, one of the cards that I will change when Jurai Ghetto gets released in our part of the TCG is this one. But for now, I'm playing Poison of the Old Man. Um, this card basically has two effects. You can either gain knife points or, or, go, go, cowboy. <laughs> or inflict damage. Um, the reason why I play this and play out 3 at the moment is that it just gives you a chance to gain life points during your opponent's battle phase, which can often turn the tide of battle completely. Um, to help you search the um, field spell, 2 terraforming. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that just helps thin your deck out slightly. Then I play 2 pots of duality, again just to help you get certain cards to hand go through the deck a bit quicker. 
I play one soul charge. Um, again, this is just to recycle basically, and because you're gaining so many life points, um, uh, you know, you don't really feel the cost of it, and obviously, it works so well with Lone Fire Blossom. This card, she, she knows, she knows. You got triple of this in the grave, so it'll just be like, summon, 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 summon! <laughs> um, and everybody's favourite staple, Rageki! Oh, and it's the last super one, the LOB. Okay, should we move on to traps? Yep. Okay, so for the traps, I've played two humid winds. I've I've worked between two and three. Yes, this is really really good um, when you're when you need to search certain aromage monsters. But I did find that aromage is quite a difficult deck to play. You need to sort of be functioning roughly round about where your opponent is in life points in order to gain advantage because you need to be either up slightly above or slightly below and if your life points aren't lower you don't gain the second effect which is the 500 life point gain which makes this card so useful um, I then play two dried winds um, I get, it's completely broken in this deck it just gives you a chance just to pretty much get rid of anything um, and obviously you have the second effect that if your life points are 3000 higher than your opponent you can pay the difference and just bang bang as many monsters as you can. <laughs> um, obviously Aroma is quite a slow deck because you mostly normal summoning so in order to protect your Aroma monsters I'm playing several staple traps. I play two Mirror Force, um, two Fiendish Chain and then as it is a control deck I play two lose one turn. Now why two I can see you asking. Well I went to um, locals and I know this is going to change with the ban list but I was playing a lot of Klee. And They're dead! And I actually drew into three lose one turn first turn which was really unlucky and um, basically couldn't do anything at all and I just feel that as it's continuous track probably two is enough if they get over one you've got the other one there and the amount of um, spell and trap negation in most main decks at the moment probably means that two will be fine okay um, I also play bottomless I don't think that needs any explanation nah staples just go past solemn and a vanity's emptiness because the only things you really special summon is With from the is from this guy again from lone fire blossom vanities is is really really going to give you a lot of advantage plant decks are broken with this at three true and then the last card for the um trap lineup is draining shield which I thought would be quite interesting because not only is it negating your opponent's attack but it's also giving you that life point advantage again. Okay. So that's all your traps? Yep. Well, let's get on to the extract then, well, shall we? Now, do you have anything to say about the extract before we start? Well, when I first started playing Aroma, I realised very quickly that the extra deck is not really something that you need to go into a lot, only probably in very specific situations because all the monsters have pretty awesome effects you are mostly playing around that okay. um, so I've built the extra deck just around things which I feel have synergy with the deck so um, I play a couple of um, tuna monsters in my side deck I play Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit so I've added a couple of synchros so I've got Queen of Thorns um, for those of you who don't know the effect um, your opponent must pay a thousand life points for each monster in normal special summon from the hand except plant monsters which is obviously really handy um, black rose dragon enough said yeah enough said there so those are the two synchros I play and then I play a variety of level of XEs I play gachi gachi gansu for level 2 um, Fortune Tune, again more life point gain. Melee of the Trees, 
that helps with graveyard and summoning. Mecha Crypt engineer, engineer, sorry, if I feel that I need to stall at any point. Uh, and then for the rank fours, Rhapsody and Berserk to um, control graveyards. Gaga ga cowboy, bang bang again. The cowboy is here. That's her son. That's my son, sorry about that. Abyss Dweller, more graveyard control. Castell, because it's Castell. Um, Heartland Draco, because I play a field spell, and obviously while well, that's on the field, it means it's going to attack directly. Going to beat the game? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, 101, because it's 101. Um, Black Ship of Corn because sometimes you just need to get over certain things and being able to inflict that damage as well is absolutely mm. essential yeah. uh, Ragnar Zero, I may take this out once Clear's not really a thing because I probably won't need it that much and Dark Rebellion, Xyz Dragon Beat Stick yeah, as a Beat Stick, yeah so Kat, before we wrap this up, do you have anything to say? Um. I'm really looking forward to Jirai Ghetto coming to the TCG because it's just going to really change this deck completely. Um, being able to special summon it in your uh, opponent's attack uh, phase and then gain life points is just going to be totally <laughs> broken. Okay. Um, I can't think of anything else, can you? No. Oh well, guys. Well, guys, this has been my friend Cat's Aromage deck profile. Please tell me what. You, please tell us what you think of it in the deck in the deck the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. So please like, comment, and subscribe. And Cat, bye. See you guys.